Hello, Benjamin here. Um, I just received my rainbow hat uh, for Android Things. So Android Things has been announced just a few days ago, actually. And I've installed it on my Raspberry Pi. And um, well, if you look at the example that they ship, and they actually have a, a few nice examples. One is, and probably the, the, the most complete, is the weather station. So the weather station actually uses the rainbow hat sensors uh, for temperature, uh, pressure, as well as the, the built-in LEDs for, um, well, monitoring the temperature and the, the weather information. And what the example does as well is uh, using Google PubSub for sending data to the Google Cloud. Um, I thought it would be a good opportunity to actually play with MQTT a bit. So what I did, and I want to briefly show you how I did that, is to use Eclipse Paho and the, the Android service uh, that's, uh, that's available in Eclipse Paho to basically tweak the application, the example, and uh, send the data over MQTT. So if you, yeah, like I said, I want to quickly show you what I did. And um, as you can see here, we have the, the, the app up and running on the rainbow hat. Um, the example is uh, displaying the temperature. The LEDs, I believe, are for um, the weather um, prediction, depending on kind of the yeah, the barometric information. So right now it looks like the weather might improve uh, in the next few days. And the, the current pr um, atmospheric pressure is actually um, here, if I, if I press the, the touch button. So this is, of course, uh, the code that you can see from the, from the example. So this app from my, uh, in, in my Android Studio is basically what I checked out from the um, Android GitHub repo and a few tweaks I made. Uh, first is um, you want to use Paho, right? So how do you get Paho in your Android application? You need to um, get it from Maven. Um, it's not in Maven, Maven Central, the latest version of the service. So I need to get it from the, the Eclipse.org Maven repo. And uh, more specifically in my app, there's a new dependency in the form of uh, those two libraries. So once I do that, uh, I think I actually need the, the, the compatibility, la compatibility layer as well. So that's something um, that you would find in my example code and that wouldn't be part of the initial configuration, uh, the initial example. So then uh, what else? Well, the, the code of the, the, main, the main app, the main activity uh, is essentially here. So uh, what happens when the app starts? Uh, it starts the weather station, so it's um, instantiating a bunch of um, of GPIOs. And actually, what's nice in uh, Android Things, um, and I already like it very much, is that they have nice APIs for uh, GPIOs, for LEDs, for everything I squared C. So that's what we do, like um, initially, and then. This is the part where originally that was that would be uh, Google PubSub. Um, I actually changed that for using an MQTT publisher. And essentially, if you go to this class, you'll see that it's essentially a copy paste from uh, what was there originally. I believe it was called the PubSub publisher. And I just changed really a few things like Android client. I want to create um, an Android client, of course, and I want to send my data to um, my MQTT broker, in my case, that would be the Eclipse um, Sandbox, the Eclipse MQTT Sandbox. And yeah, basically setting up the connection and blah, blah, blah. Oh, one thing that I forgot to show you guys is the, the manifest of the app. Uh, a few things that are needed, needed there are the dependency toward the MQTT service, as well as, um, I think, uh, at least this permission, the um, the, um, the PAHO service, the MQTT service runs in the background and it might require uh, this permission. Uh, I think we should be giving more if we want to leverage the fact that there is offline buffering uh, as well now in, in the um, Android service, but that's um, that it works this way. So back to the MQTT publisher. Yeah, like I said, uh, we want to uh, first set up the connection and then um, Every time um, data is ready, ready to be posted, essentially I just take whatever was already there uh, coming from the original example uh, to craft a JSON payload where my temperature as well as my pressure are, are 
part of the payload. Uh, I believe a timestamp is also added to the payload. Like if we look at this guy over here, um, yeah, temperature, pressure, let's include the timestamp as well. I didn't touch that, right? I could, I could make probably a, a much smaller JSON payload. Um, I didn't bother. And so that's essentially it. What happens now is that um, you can take this application and granted that you have um, either uh, well, a Raspberry Pi with a rainbow hat or um, uh, an Intel Edison or a few of the other boards that are supported in the, with the appropriate sensors, sensors attached to it, then you can run the app, which I did. So I actually have the app up and running right now. Uh, let's look at uh, where's my yeah my terminal. Um, so if you if you look at the, the tutorial for for setting up your Android Things device, you will see how to uh, configure the Wi-Fi as well as um, connecting and setting up your ADB uh, so as it, it talks to your to your device. So beforehand, um, I actually connected to my my Raspberry Pi. So whatever is the the IP address, you will need to, to use that. Um, and that's it, right? So if I look at um, my um, available devices, my Raspberry Pi is now there. So I can run the app, uh, which I already did. Obviously, you, you see the app uh, up and running here. One thing that I could do to show you that it's effectively live, so that would be ADB over IP, as opposed to maybe uh, what you usually do uh, when you connect uh, your phone over USB, you do ADB over USB. In my case, that would be IP. So that's my logs, uh, logs coming from the Android app. It looks like it might actually be the same values, right? But that's that's not IoT yet, right? So let's see what happens is now, uh, if now I try to visualize the data. So if you don't know MQTT Spy, uh, check it out. Uh, there'll be a link in the in the video. It's a really great tool, which I've already started here. Um, and what can you do with MQTT Spy? Well, you can spy MQTT communication. So I'm connecting uh, to the Eclipse IoT broker. It looks like I have an old um, topic here. Let's just remove it and what do I want to do now? I want to subscribe to the data. Um, this guy is pushing data to the cloud, to the to the MQTT broker on a specific topic, right? Which which topic is that, by the way? Uh, that's actually something that I've um, set up here uh, as a, a parameter of my, of my app. So that's the topic that I'm going to copy on my clipboard. So as here, I can subscribe to the topic and to the, the wall hierarchy. In fact, let's subscribe. And now what we can see is that every second, that's how the, conf the, the application is configured right now. Every second data is, seems to be available and data in the form of JSON. So already I can uh, easy, easily visualize the temperature and it looks like uh, the actual temperature on the LCD is in sync with what I see in, um, in my MQTT spy thingy. And what what else? What's the what's the some of the nice features of, of MQTT spy? Well, one is um, uh, well, the ability to to, to easily uh, set up uh, your um, your subscription, your your publications, etc. And the other is the ability to actually chart and plot plot the data. So what if I wanted to show the value for this topic. Well, let's do that. Um, crap, it looks like it doesn't work. Um, or maybe it does. Uh, if you remember, my data is effectively um, JSON data. So what if I were to use a, a path here to, um, to browse my JSON structure? So my data is uh, part of the data field and more specifically the temperature. Uh, field of, of, of the data. So the syntax in JSON path would be to essentially do this. All right. And so what happens now is that I am displaying the values, uh, the 50 latest messages on a graph. So the bad news is that the hat being very close to the Raspberry Pi, it actually gets very hot. That's 37 Celsius. Um, but anyways, that's but still the temperature that's being shown, right? And actually over the last few minutes, is, it seems pretty stable. And uh, I could also visualize the, the pressure that way. Uh, although I won't, um, I won't bother you with that, but you, you easily realize that you can add new time series and that'll do. So I think that's what I had. If you have any 
questions, uh, please comment um, in the YouTube comments or you can also comment on the, the blog post. I will be looking forward to seeing what you guys do uh, and how do you improve the, the, the example if you start playing with Android things. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel as well if you want to be um, notified of, of new tutorials in the future. Bye, take care.